Hey guys, today I'm gonna to show you how to make an awesome software tutorial. I myself have made hundreds of tutorials here on YouTube with millions of views. I also have my own courses that I sell on my website. So if you wanna know how to make an awesome software tutorial, I promise you, you're in the right place. All right, let's dive right into it. Here's what you need to know before you even roll. First and foremost, you wanna have a very focused idea for your software tutorial. What is the specific skill you're trying to teach? And if you're trying to teach multiple skills, that actually actually warrants multiple videos. So really keep everything focused. You also want to like mentally set a goal for your viewer before you make your video too. Like you want to think, what is this viewer going to be able to accomplish after they watch my tutorial? What new skill will they learn? You want to filter out any superfluous information or any tangents or sidebars. You want to keep your tutorial super, super focused. And you want to really lay out the steps in your tutorial on paper before you get rolling. Literally for my software tutorials, I like type everything out in an outline so I can make sure that I'm giving accurate information and I'm not skipping any steps. All right, let's talk about your setup. You're gonna need a screen recording app for your software tutorials. I'm on a Mac, so I use an app called ScreenFlow. And what I love about ScreenFlow is it gives me a lot of control over my export settings for my screen recordings. So I can control the frame rate of my export, which is really important when you're trying to match your screen recording to a camera recording so you don't get drift in post-production. I also love that ScreenFlow allows me to export very high res video clips. This is going to be super important when you're zooming into certain parts of your frame in your software tutorials. My viewers tell me they love when I zoom in on the screen in my software tutorials so they can really see what I'm doing. So you wanna make sure that your exports are super high resolution so when you zoom into the frame, you don't lose picture clarity. I would also recommend that you invest in a monitor with the 16 by nine aspect ratio. This way your screen recordings will fill the entire frame here on YouTube. Here's a side-by-side -side of what it looks like when I screen record with my 16 by nine aspect ratio monitor or my MacBook. You can see the dimensions are different and there are ways to override that aspect ratio if you are on a laptop that is not 16 by nine. But in my opinion, the easiest way to do it is just to get that 16 by nine monitor I use this Samsung monitor that I will link to down below. The next thing you need is a little bit debatable, but I would recommend that you get a camera and show your face during your tutorials. I find watching tutorials much more pleasurable when I can actually see the person who's giving me the information, at least at the very beginning of the tutorial. It's not mandatory to show your face, but I personally would recommend it. What is mandatory though, is getting a good microphone. There's nothing worse than trying to watch a tutorial and learn something, but the sound quality is really really, really bad. I will recommend a couple of microphones down in the description, but just promise me you don't use the in-camera microphone on your computer or your webcam. It's not sufficient. It's not good enough. All right, let's talk about what you need to think about when you're actually rolling. I would recommend that you record your software tutorial, what's called live to tape. That means you're talking through the tutorial and going through it on your computer at the same time. I've seen other people recommend that you script out your voiceovers, record them, them and then try to do the screen recordings and match your action to your voice. To me, that's a lot of extra work. I think your best bet is to practice your software tutorial off camera so you're really comfortable with the material and the timing and the flow of it and then do it live to tape. I would also recommend that you take advantage of the countdown on your screen recording software. ScreenFlow gives me a five second countdown before it actually starts recording. So I will clap my hands together at the exact second that the screen recording starts so that when I bring it into post-production, I can match my audio and the start of my screen recording perfectly. You can see this little waveform here is where I clap my hands. So I'm just going to drag the beginning of my screen recording right to that point. And now my voice and what's going on in the screen are always perfectly in sync. All right, let's talk more about post-production. Unless you went through your tutorial with no pauses and no mess ups, you're probably going to need to do some editing. A lot of these screen recording apps do have editing capabilities like I know ScreenFlow does, but I personally do all of my editing in Final Cut Pro because that's just where I'm comfortable. By the way, guys, if you want to learn how to edit in Final Cut Pro, I have a course just for beginners like you called Final Cut Rockstar. You can check it out at jenjager.com. 
you should take a first rough pass through your tutorial and cut out any long pauses or any mistakes that you had to go back and fix. But just make sure you don't cut out any important steps. That makes people very angry. I also like to speed up any sections that take a long time in real life, but that are not important for the viewer to see in real time. Another thing I run into in this first pass is that sometimes I'll misspeak, like I'll say the wrong word, or I don't say something as clearly or succinctly as I could. I like to just leave a mark on my first pass and know that I'll come back to it later and re-record just those few parts and drop in the new audio where necessary. Once I get my tutorial cleaned up, I go in and do some more fine detailed work. So this is where I will add zooms into certain parts of the frame that I'm referencing or working on. This is why I said before that it's really important to have a high resolution screen. I also like to add graphic overlays to draw attention to specific buttons or specific areas of the screen. And then after that, I'll go back and add some text overlays to kind of punch up specific points. You can find a lot of ready-made text templates and accent graphics like these on a site like Motion Array, which I will link to down below as well. All right, you're almost done with your tutorial, but there's some important things you need to do on the YouTube side when you upload it. Let's talk about that. First and foremost, you want to title your video properly. Actually have it say how to whatever, because that's what people are going to be searching for on YouTube. I would also recommend that you utilize the chapters feature here on YouTube. This allows viewers looking for a very specific skill that's included in your tutorial to find your video in the exact spot where that skill is explained. And lastly, once that video has some views, you want to go back and analyze the data. Head into YouTube Studio and click on that specific video. Head up to the Engagement tab and scroll down till you find your retention graph. If you see any spikes in that retention graph, that typically means there's a lot of interest in whatever it was that you were talking about at that moment, or you didn't explain it very clearly and people had to keep going back and watching that part over and over. So that might warrant an entire other software tutorial on YouTube. You can get a lot of ideas from those retention graphs. You guys, that's everything I have to share with you about making awesome software tutorials for YouTube. If you're interested in learning more about Final Cut Pro, check out my course, Final Cut Rockstar at jenjager.com. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks to everyone who watches all the way to the end. I picked out some other videos for you and I'll see you again.